Sheriff of the End, Episode 2, is almost like a completely different series when compared to the first episode of the series, which was dark, dismal, depressing, and gothic. The second episode of the series is a lot of fun. I mean, it's still got some of those creepy, disturbing elements that you saw in the first episode, but it just seems like it's having a lot more fun with it. I mean, there's vampires, there's big badass monster slaying. I gotta say, the second episode really caught me by surprise. Seraph of the End, at first you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Interesting thing to note about this week's episode is that we finally do get our intro for the show, and I like it. I'm basically just kind of indifferent to it because it's the very first time I saw it. What I will say is I really like the imagery. It gives us a great idea of what the action in the show is going to be like, getting a look at some of the uh, cast of characters. What I don't like about it is that it basically gives away some major plot points. So, spoiler warning, it looks like the character of Mikaela or Mika, is actually going to live, and it looks like he's going to be on the vampire side. Big shock there. It's pretty obvious that was probably going to happen, but, you know, after having an arm shoved through his frickin' chest and then having his arm cut off, you'd think he wouldn't get out of that situation alive, but then again, vampires. Our episode opens up with Yuichiro, who is now a member of the Moon Demon Company, which is a part of the Imperial Demon Army, which basically is like the last stronghold from mankind fighting against the vampires. And they all have these really cool weapons, which are imbued with magic and special abilities, because you need these type of weapons to actually kill vampires. That is made a point in this week's episode. But you actually get to see Yuichiro's skills at the beginning of this week's episode when he takes on this big, massive monster, which my first thought when I saw it was, okay, wait a minute, back up just a second. I thought this was a show about vampires. Apparently, after this virus came out and destroyed almost all of mankind and all these vampires came out, so did all of these monsters and creatures. These monsters pretty much just come from the depths of nowhere, but they're a welcome addition because it means more action scenes, and we get to see you actually get into a cool scene where he fights against one of these monsters single-handedly with his katana sword, literally slicing and dicing it up. It's a very nice action scene and a great way to open up the episode, but right after that, we go back in time. We get to see that actually he didn't get to join this army outright. In order to actually do this, first he had to go to school and he was put on sort of this like temporary suspension. And this is an interesting plot device because it's actually going along with what's really going on with you here where he doesn't want to get close to anyone because he's afraid they're all going to die because that's pretty much what's happened his entire life. And this one big general guy by the name of Guren, who's a complete badass, I can just infer that because, you know, he kind of is. But Guren actually doesn't even really trust Yuichiro all that much and that's why he wants him to try and learn to have a little more camaraderie, make some friends, maybe then he can actually join the Moon Demon Company. To make matters worse, not only does you not want to be in school, but he's being constantly hounded by his army surveillance officer, Shinoa. She seems like she's basically going to be the main female lead of the series, and she's cute and she's basically there just to have some nice funny quips. We're also introduced to the character of Yoichi, who also wants to join the Moon Demon Company so he can get revenge for his sister, who was killed by a vampire. The problem is, Yoichi is kind of a wimp. He's kind of a weakling. He even has to be saved by you in this week's episode against a pair of bullies, but he actually can't fight back because if he does, he's not going to be able to join the army, so he ends up getting his ass handed to him, although he has to let that happen. For the most part, everything seemed pretty hunky-dory in this little last remnants of humanity. Everybody seemed like they were having a good time despite the fact that they were constantly being hunted down by vampires and everything. And then suddenly, BOOM! Big explosion out of nowhere and this weird experimental vampire has decided to escape and go on a rampage, sucking blood and causing all sorts of chaos. This is when Yu decides to do one of the smartest slash stupid things he's ever thought of, which is to actually hunt down this vampire, kill it himself, and this will impress Gurren enough to let him join the army. This of course leads to a big flashy anime sequence where we get to see him fighting against this female vampire in a classroom, which is pretty damn awesome. The choreography here is really great. There's a lot of impact. I especially love the particle effects when they're slamming each other against the walls. And then they end up just falling out of a freaking window and then Gurren ends up saving the day by stabbing this vampire in the back and then killing her with his special magic sword, which I love the animation they do when he actually ends up killing her and she just explodes into this like red and black dust 
it's pretty freaking awesome. So, the end of the episode really introduces us to the main members of the Moon Demon Company. They all have their own distinct designs. I'm sure we're going to get to know them eventually. And basically, Gurren lets them know, look, you got to make some friends in order to, you know, basically join the army. We need you to be able to work with other people. You can't just be a lone wolf. And that's when Yoichi finally decides to show up out of nowhere, run and glomp his friend to death, actually giving him entrance into the Moon Demon Company. Ending this week's episode, which was honestly pretty freaking good. So what's the rundown? On this week's episode of Seraph of the End, I love this episode so much more than the first. I just love the overall tone of it a lot more. There was Really no humor in the previous episode. I mean, there was some cuteness from the kids and everything, but they all ended up getting slaughtered by the end of the episode, and it just had this real, just dark atmosphere to it that was almost a little unbearing, and this week's episode had much more of a sense of humor, and I really appreciated that. Uh, you know, just little scenes, like when you decided to run away and fight the vampire, where he actually dropped that soda, which ended up just spinning on the ground. Like, they didn't even have to focus on that, but it definitely broke some of the tension that was actually going on during that scene, and uh, I think it's really clever how they were able to sort of like balance the uh, the humor and the action and the seriousness all in this episode. But this episode right here is also just uh, letting us know a little bit more about what's going on on the outside world, how all of humanity actually isn't dead. There's still uh, a little bit of them left and they're basically trying to rebuild that and sort of like take back the earth so to speak against the monsters which came out of nowhere. I didn't expect that at all. I thought this was just going to be a show about vampires. The minute I saw these big, nasty, like, crab monster things, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Or, like... And, and, you know, I'm okay with it, though, because it definitely led to some really cool action scenes, and I can't wait to see uh, more of the development from all these new characters who have just been introduced in this episode. I was a little bummed at first because I'm like, oh shit, is this going to take place in a high school setting for some reason? But it looks like they're actually going to abandon that almost entirely now that he's uh, sort of, like, graduated from school and get ready to move on. But uh, like I said, there's also a lot of humor in this week's episode, aside from the really cool action. I love the first scene where you actually get to see you in school and how he just does not want to be there whatsoever, constantly interrupting the class and pissing off his teacher. And of course, it's made even worse by the fact that Shinua, his army surveillance officer, is hounding him constantly. It's really, really funny dynamic. The character of Yoichi, you know, I don't even know what to think of him quite yet. Um, you know, he, he's basically like the Krillin of the show, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. He's basically the sidekick character. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of development from him and uh, see him grow quite a bit, but uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. The biggest element in terms of development for you is him actually getting attached to people and actually letting people in. That's going to be the biggest thing there. But uh, really, the action this week. It was awesome. That classroom battle was really, really intense. I actually almost thought that that one pink-haired vampire girl was going to be the one that was shown in the intro of the show, but considering that Gurun pretty much just filleted her ass, I don't think that's actually going to be the case. Um, all the animation during that scene was really, really good. The opening scene where he was attacking the monster looked great. Uh, the atmosphere is really good. The music is also really good in this show. So this was a good episode right here with a lot of action, tons of humor, lots of new characters, lots of world building, and a much more interesting episode I think than the first one and uh, if you liked the first episode definitely check out this one uh, it does mix some things up a bit I know it's also based on a manga hopefully uh, it is uh, doing justice to the manga series I haven't looked at it quite yet I'm just trying to experience it in anime form first what I will say is I like this episode quite a bit so I'm going to give it a four out of five. Check it out, guys. It was pretty good. Thank you guys for watching my review. Before you leave, make sure to tell me what you thought about this week's episode of Seraph of the End. Did you have a favorite brand new character who showed up this week? What do you want to see from this brand new vampire monster-filled anime series? Make sure to subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, and one of the best ways to help us out is to like the video. Hit that thumbs up. It'll let a lot of other people see our video. Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, stay dandy, baby.